Hey guys, just got done watching Wolf Creek from 2005, directed by Greg McLean, and the writer was Greg McLean too, and it starred John Jarrett, Cassandra Magra, Kesty Marassa, Nathan Phillips, Gordon Pooley, Guy O'Donnell, and to most of you, nobody else really matters in this film other than the four people, the first four people. Because the film starts out basically with three friends going on a trip. They're going to go to the Wolf Creek Crater. And basically they travel a quite long distance to get there. Obviously it's like road trip and they want to get there and see it. So at the beginning of the film we meet Liz, Kurt, Christy and Ben. And they're all really close. And Liz and Ben kind of have feelings for each other. Which you explore in the movie in the first, well, 45 minutes. It turns out you end up with them kissing at the crater. But before we get really started, one of the best things about this movie is the connection you go with the characters. The characters are very fleshed out, the characters are very brought to life, and you get this really realistic feel that they're real people. Even though you know it's a horror film, you know something's going to happen, you know they're real people, and you feel it, and you kind of feel for the characters later on. So... They go to like this party thing and they're partying before they go to the crater. So on the journey, you then get the credits, the opening credits, which is pretty cool with the music, because I like that. That's quite good. One of the things that you will notice with this film is I think it was filmed on a HD Handycam. So it looks amateurish, but it's professional. It's like, it's an amateurish feel for it, but it's far from that, if you get what I mean. And it's set in Australia. Set in the art back. And so they finally get to the crater after meeting these really weird people. They stop off at like this petrol station. I think it's petrol station. Well, they stop off there. And these men go on about it. They're uh, talking about it. They want to hunt the two girls, basically. And when Ben comes in, they go, hey, yo. And he, he turns around and he goes, yeah. And they go, they basically say to him about it. They, they want to hunt the women. They get quite upset and they leave. Well, right in that bit, there's a hint at what's going to happen in the background, but you don't, you don't see it until the end of the movie because it's shown back. So, they then get to the crater and they stay there and they have like a ghost story kind of time talking about UFOs and this and the dark. And then they go up to the crater, which is really nice and really nice. Really nice, really nice. It's great. It's like a nice little area and it's pretty good. So they basically want to leave, but they but the car won't work. Yep, the car stopped working, and their watches have stopped working. So you sit there going, "Oh, really? What's going on?" Because if you don't know much about the film, that's the best thing, really, because it's just based on true events. And to be honest with you, with films that can be very debatable. So anyway, getting back with the story. So from now on, from this moment on, it's going to be spoilers. Okay. So I'm just putting that in there. So they can't leave. So they basically end up staying in the car and it's dark and Ben's flashing the light off and you're just sitting there going, why would you do that when people could see it? And they can come and butcher you. Well, Mick Taylor turns up, played by John Jarrett, and he's like your typical outback country guy. And he's a bit weird because he because he says he says things to him like, oh, sit there. You're from Sydney, that's where all the poofters are, and all this. He goes, I'm just playing with your fella, and all this. Well, it's not, it, didn't say, it doesn't say fella, but you get what I mean. I'm just playing with your guy, you know, or mate. And uh, they all get a bit wary of him because the way he talks, and about how he goes on, someone could have found you out here and butchered you all, and you're like, hmm, yeah. So basically, he has a look at the car for me. He says, he says their thing's gone, something's gone in the car. And... He says he can tow them back to his, fix it, and they can be on their way. So they're a bit like, but we haven't got any money talking to each other. And Ben goes, oh, well, you know, we still need to get it done. And they're like, yeah, yeah. So they're in the, so they're in there with him. And they still get a bit freaked out by him. But he gets them back to his place, and they sit around the camp, and he gives them pure water or something, pure heavy mountain water, something like that. And it's supposed to be refreshing. Well... The next moment when they wake up, Liz and Christy are both tied up. 
Liz is basically tied up in a uh, shed looking thing and she gets loose and she gets out and she looks for obviously Christy and Nick, uh, Ben and she finds Christy getting tortured by Mick and Mick's like this, oh you think you can do this and he's making fun of her and he's attacking her and threatening her with a gun and he's got a knife he's waving about and he looks like he's really enjoying himself. And this is where the realistic horror comes into effect. Because the whole the whole character of Mick Taylor, you don't feel like it's out of reach. You feel like it's very realistic. You could get a man who's waving a knife around, having fun, basically punching you in the face and torturing you bit by bit. That's not beyond that's not beyond believability. You can actually see it possibly happening. And that is terrifying. Especially when you go somewhere where there's no one else and you get caught up in it. So, basically, Liz is hiding. And you don't really see Ben for that much the rest of the film. Much more of the film. Don't see him. And she hides under the table and she pulls his gun on him and she shoots him. And it shoots him in the neck. It doesn't go like, but it goes like, right there, you know, like where you can still be alive. So he's gone on the floor. She, she, she helps... Um, Christy and they get in the truck. Well, she has to go back and get the keys from his pocket. He's still out of it. And you're like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe she got a lucky shot. Maybe that's the end of the movie. Hold on. Hold on. But hold on. There's, there's still 40 minutes left. If he's dead, is he going 40 minutes and then driving off without Ben? So she gets in the truck with the keys and then that's when Mick starts shooting them. And at this point in the movie, I'm screaming, run him over! Run him over. You know, run the fucker over. So she goes for it and he jumps out of the way. Reverses out. They escape, basically. And then she drives the truck down this big thing and Mick turns up with a really effective scene where they're hiding by the dirt on the floor. You know, like on a hill. And he's standing over them while they're like that on the floor. And it's a really effective scene because you don't see his face or that. You just see his shadow and see his figure there. Very creepy because you're like, is he going to find them? Is he going to find them? So there goes off looking for them and so forth. And she says to, Liz says to Christy, wait for me. I've got to go back. Well, after all this hard work, Liz ends up getting stabbed in the back. Yep. He finds her. He grabs hold of her and he stabs her in the back and she gets out of the car. Like struggles out. And he grabs hold of her and he says to her, do you know how we stop people like you basically escaping? And she's like, ah. And he basically sticks the knife in her spinal cord and tears it, basically. And you're like, woohoo! Yeah! That's it, my man. Yeah! Woohoo! Because you're like, this is incredible. Because you're like, I'm really enjoying this movie because it's dark, it's gritty, it's filmed to a way that it's so uneasy to watch. But you're just a hook to watching it, especially if you've never seen it before. So he does that to her. And he's like, ha, 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 and he's laughing, you know, and you're like, yep, this guy's insane. So, later on, you see a little bit of Ben waking up and he's trying to escape. But then you go back to Christy, who is basically running down the road. And he's like, poor old man, he pulls over and she asks him to help her and he says, sure. So, she gets in the car and then he puts the hood down. And he sees there's this bullet through his drinks flask, like his coffee flask or whatever was in it. And he looks around and then he gets shot with a sniper rifle. Right, and he's dead. Christy is laying in the back of the car. She gets in the front of the car. She's driving away. She's driving away. He catches up with her. She gets him off the road. And Mick then pulls out his gun and she's like, ha ha, ha ha, because you can tell she's going mentally crazy because of what's happened, you know. And she's driving down the road and he sh and also he's going to shoot her in the back. He's going to shoot her in the back for the window. He doesn't. He shoots the uh, tire and the car flips and then she crawls out because women like him. This film seems like women crawling out of cars. And he walks up behind her and just shoots her point blank, dead. Not a feeling in the world. Just boom. And it's such a dark scene because it's such a cold scene. It's just like boom, done. 
So then you go back to Ben, and Ben finally gets away because he's like got these stuff in his arms, like these nail things that gets off him. I think it's nail things, and he gets and this German couple find him and basically gets help. Well, at the very end, because he was the witness that survived, there was this thing about how nobody found Liz or Chris Lee's bodies. And how their witness, Ben, wasn't much of a witness because he didn't really see anything. And to this day, no one's found their bodies and no one was caught. But he was let let go because originally they thought he was the one who probably did it. So at the very end, you see Mick basically walking, walking off in the distance. And it's a very, very effective movie. It came out in 2005. And it's one of those films where you watch it. And the first you're like, oh, yeah, three friends, a camera. Oh, here we go again. But the film with the camera, but it's not a fan footage camera film. But like, oh, here we go again. And then you get into it and you're like, oh, here we don't go again. And it starts getting great. And there's a scene, there's a scene where, where uh, Liz picks up a camera and she looks at it. And it's got all these other people that are recording footage of them going to the crater and everything. And then Mick basically gave them the same Walt Ehrman. How he tricked Ehrman. It's got Ben's one there. And in the background of Ben's video, you see Mick's truck. And it's like, bloody hell. He was following them all along. And did he do something to their car to stop it from working? Because he's the one who looks at it. So, hmm. But the film is really well directed and written by Greg McLean. And I have to be honest, I really think I'm going to look at more of his movies because he's a fantastic director. I mean, I'm looking here right now, and he did Rogue, and he did Wolf Creek 2, and he's doing Six Miranda Drive. Well, now that he did Wolf Creek 2, I've got better, I've got better, uh, I'm more excited about watching it. Where is it? Where is it? Where's Wolf Creek 2? You know, I own Wolf Creek 2. I bought it from CEX for $8. I'm going to probably watch it soon after watching this movie because I really enjoyed it. I have seen Wolf Creek before, but it was so long ago that I'd kind of forgotten the premise of it and kind of forgotten what happened in it very well. But yeah, going back to the review quickly to finish it off, I'd give this a 4.5 out of 5 because it's got a great atmosphere. It's really dark. The filming is perfectly gritty and, and just creepy. And the whole amateurist feel of the film, even though it's done, makes it feel like it's directed by a genius filmmaker. And you just feel like you could watch more of this man's movies. And it's like, it's like John Girac. John Girac makes a great villain. He looks crazy, but he looks like that kind of crazy where you just think, oh, he's just like an outback guy in Australia, a little bit crazy and a little bit eccentric. And you think that. And as it happens, he's not. He's a dark, evil piece of garbage that wants to torture people. There's a bit in the film where where one of the people looks over, one of the people says to Liz or Christy, and there's this dead rotten body on the hanging from the ceiling. And he says something about her, oh, he had a lot of fun with her, and he's saying that it's over. And you're sitting there going, she's naked. She's dead. What was he doing with the body? So it was very, very creepy. So I recommend Wolf Creek. I definitely recommend it. The film is great. The cinematography is awesome. It's one of those films that if you want to watch a film which is going to horrify you and really make you think about things, especially when you go and visit somewhere you've never been before, in the, you know, in a really rural area, you're going to think about this film after watching it. The darkness, the creepiness. Is there somebody following you? Is there someone in the background waiting to get you? It's one of those films that really affects your mind and is perfect to watch. I highly recommend maybe buying the DVD, getting one of those uh, DVD players in the car and watching it when you go on your trip because it's going to make you think, ooh. But yeah, I highly recommend buying Wolf Creek if you haven't. It's a fantastic film. And as I said before, I got a 4.5 out of 5. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. And if you haven't, please subscribe and please like the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.